organization in which we grew up in when we were in UP, an organization which we lift up to you for your guidance and for their continued strength, an organization which we love so much that we, the alumni, are still here caring for it and uh, caring for everybody in the organization. Lord, we thank you for the organizers of this um, webinar. Uh, especially those who uh, really placed a lot of efforts uh, to make this happen. And we thank you, Lord, for giving uh, God's, God's Lanuda the time and the energy to come here and uh, give us, share with us his expertise. We lift up to you, everybody, in this Zoom meeting, Lord. May we all be free from, free from um, the pandemic, the effects of the pandemic economically, socially, health-wise, Lord. For all this we pray to you, Lord, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Salamat! Thank salamat, you. Manay Sheri! So before we begin our program, I would like to mention a set of house rules to facilitate an orderly and organized discussion in this virtual platform. So please mute. You can now mute all your microphone while the speakers are presenting to avoid any audio interference. Kindly use the chat box to input your comments or questions while the discussion or presentations are ongoing. Toward the end of the session, we will request you to turn on your camera so that we can take a group photo of the participants. Other online protocols are flashed on the screen. Next slide, please. Act, please be informed that we will be recording the session, the recordings purely for documentation purposes and will not be shared to anyone without prior consent. Okay, next slide, please. At this juncture, allow me to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests and partners who made this event possible. So we have, of course, our current UP alumni president, C. Teresa T. G. Serrano. We also have with us the current UP Ibalon President, President si Ella Rinion. And of course, gabus po kita. Dahil ko na po, sasaro sa roon, baka may malimutan, malingawan ako. And then, of course, uh, thank you very much for God's Lanosa, who will be our main facilitator for this structured Kurumustahan session. Okay, so our session for today is part of the UP Alumni Association response to COVID-19 pandemic we are all experiencing. To tell us more about the plan of UP Ibalon Alumni Organization, may I call on Mr. Tirso T.G. Serrano, our president, to tell us more about it and welcome all of us in this session. T.G., take it away. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Lisa. Aliza uh, is our uh, Vice President for Internal and she is the Project Manager for our web seminar series. So uh, thanks very much for that uh, introduction. I would like to share a very short presentation. So I will just share a screen. Can you please, uh, JM, uh, shift the sharing to my own, okay? Can you see now the Apo. okay? So as uh, Lisa said, we are honored as your incumbent uh, board of directors to present uh, something that we have uh, uh, talked about in our uh, board of uh, directors meeting. Actually, this photo was uh, taken even before the pandemic. No, this was February, 
as you can see, these are all the members of the BOD. Uh, we have here, uh, aside from VP uh, internal leader that I mentioned, we have uh, Mac Pavia, who is Vice President for External. Then uh, alongside with us, to my left, uh, from left to right, of course, that's Attorney Sherry. Uh, then uh, Past President uh, Albert. Then we have Board of Director uh, Kian, and then Caloy, Romeo, and then Judy, then uh, Anton, and uh, of course, after Mac Pavia, we have Azel and uh, Carl Ramirez. No? So uh, among ourselves, we were able to discuss some of the things that we wanted uh, to, uh, to pursue as members of our BOD. Can you still uh, see this, please? Okay, Liz, yes. You... Okay, yeah. Okay, po. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, our assistance programs, very briefly, uh, would be falling under three groups. One would be our medical uh, uh, initiatives. When we say medical, of course, those that are uh, consistent with the immediate needs of our uh, Ibalon members, both alumni and incumbents. The second would be non-medical, like the one that we are having now. Uh, the webinar series, the things that uh, will be of help or in support of the, you know, needs of our uh, constituents, uh, so to speak. Of course, uh, these are already uh, published in our social media accounts. I don't have to make a detailed presentation on this. And uh, suffice it to say that uh, like any effort of a group, of an association, everything will actually depend upon the uh, participation of everyone to make things uh, going in the manner that uh, we wish them to be. We call our entire program a, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, we have coined the term, it's called Ibangonian. Anyway, the Ibangonian program, I'm still there in your gallery view, is a combination of uh, three root words, Ibalonian, sounds like Ibalonian or Ibangonian. Two, second word is uh, Bangon, Ibangon, as in uh, uh, Iangat. And of course, Ngonyan, which is, uh, of course, the Bicol term for now. So the collective term Ibangonian is something that will represent our clarion call uh, among our members to probably uh, stop uh, for a while and uh, start considering also the welfare of uh, everyone in our Ibalon community. So that being said, I will not uh, uh, deal with uh, any more details. Uh, we are pursuing now uh, the web seminar series under Project Manager Lisa. Uh, by the way, all the other programs that we published or initiatives that we published will be pursued by uh, our so-called project managers or those that will be in charge of uh, individually conceptualizing, uh, programming, and uh, spearheading these programs, be they be medical, non-medical, and uh, what you call uh, specific for our dear incumbents or students, like emergency assistance, and so and so forth. So uh, at this juncture, I will uh, pause and I would already uh, just uh, continue to thank all those who have uh, taken time out precisely for this maiden webinar series and uh, we really look forward to everyone's uh, continued uh, uh, generosity and concern not only for our own alumni association but also among the other target uh, publics and constituents that we're talking about, particularly our fellow Bicolanos. So with that, Lisa, I will end my uh, opening remarks and uh, probably later on uh, towards the end of the webinar series, uh, we may be able to have some opportunity to discuss some more in detail concerning this uh, rather ambitious and generous 
ibangon yan, UP Ibalon Alumni Association uh, Assistance Program. So, thank you very much, everyone. Okay, just marvelous po tabi, TG Serrano, our president, for informing us of the planned activities and projects of UP Ibalon and getting us all excited to it. Okay, so going back to this afternoon's activity, how will the session be? Uh, how will the session look like? This session is a facilitated conversation to explore understanding of the experience of change brought about by COVID-19 and its impact on mental health and well-being. At the end of the Zoom or our Zoom session, we will be able to, number one, clarify our own and others' experience of current COVID-19 context using concepts of change and transition. And second, we will be able to identify and share strategies for managing stress and building personal resilience and well-being. It will be a process of co-creation and sharing of practical tips and interactive exercises, including small group conversations with a dash of helpful research concepts and resources. So why are we doing it? Because we will be stronger together. As an individual, we need to work out our own personal thoughts, feelings, and actions in this context of unprecedented change. As a UP Balon community, we can engage each other in a safe environment, thereby creating a stronger network of support while exploring possibilities for moving forward. I'm sorry for my phone. Okay, for moving forward in a positive way. Our main facilitator is a distinguished learning strategist, assessment expert, and executive coach. He is also our UP Ibalon past president, year 1976 to 1977. Mga co-Ibalonians, let us all welcome Godofredo Godz Lanosa. Welcome everyone to our UP Ibalon Kurumastahan. And thank you for joining the rest in this virtual session. This is a safe space where we can all share and learn from each other regarding some ways to cope and thrive despite the challenges presented by the COVID pandemic. This is a space which we are all co-creating. In consideration of a few planned breakup rooms for small group sharing, we encourage you to please stay until the end of the session, if possible. There are also a few points to consider in ensuring a seamless flow. One, share your video at the start so everyone can see everyone else. It has been ages since some people have seen others. And this is a great opportunity to somehow reconnect despite the distance. However, you have the option to stop the video if your connection becomes a bit of a challenge so you can have better bandwidth. Second, be mindful of possible distractions around you. So uh, we request that you mute when not speaking. Don't forget to unmute though and mention your name before speaking. Please feel free to use the chat function for assistance or to ask questions which you are unable to raise during the live session. So a bit of a context. My name is Godofredo or Gods Lunuza, Batch 76. Salamat sa invitasyon in the Lisa Sorbito and TG Serrano to facilitate this session. I'm honored by the invitation and grateful that you have explored some ways to support our UP Ballon community. Hopefully, this will turn out to be enjoyable and worthwhile for all of you. As both TG and Lisa have indicated, we're all stronger together. As an individual, we do need to work out our own personal thoughts, feelings, and actions in this context of unprecedented change. 
As a UP Ibalon community, however, we can engage each other in a safe environment that creates a stronger network of support while exploring possibilities for moving forward in a positive way. Perhaps a bit of information about me might help in understanding the context for some of the things I will share. I'm with Batch76 and one of the co-founders. I grew up in Pili, Camarín Sur, and moved to Naga in my high school years. My wife is the former Julie Sartida, or JJ to some of you. Also an Ibalonian, Batch88. She grew up in Viraca, Tandoanas, and also moved to Naga in her high school years. We have a wonderful 19-year-old daughter. Her name is Thea, and she is turning third year at the University of British Columbia. I do have an, a master's degree in industrial organizational psychology and used to teach at UP, Ateneo, and De La Salle universities. I'm currently a learning strategist with the British Columbia government and also a coaching and consulting business on the side. So just to uh, share a bit of where I'm coming from for a number of the things that I would be sharing with you. So what can you expect to learn in this Zoom conversation? I'm hoping we can have an interactive conversation on exploring support for ourselves and for each other. And there are two focal points in this conversation. One, the COVID, COVID pandemic is an unexpected disruption that impacted everyone's lives. Hence, we seek to provide an opportunity for a better understanding of one's personal experience of a significant change. And second, perhaps in everyone's collective sharing, as well as from available resources, we are able to help you identify tips and techniques for enhancing your personal resilience, mental health, and well being. There is so much to cover as far as stress management, change, mental health, resilience, and well being are concerned. Um, I was given a kind of daunting task with um, having to address these uh, points, but I do understand given the situation we're in. And um, I'll try to touch a little bit on, on this. So what I'll do is address uh, the following topics that will hopefully uh, you know, cover what you see here on the screen. First, the meaning of change and transition. And of course, the psychological experience of change when we focus on how we experience the COVID environment you know, that uh, we're all facing right now. So the psychological experience of change from what we call endings to new beginnings. And then third, the meaning of personal resilience, including what we need to build within ourselves for us to become more resilient in terms of self-management. To be able to address all that, you will be requested to do some personal reflections and, and then engage in small group conversations. And towards the end, you will be experiencing a mindfulness exercise, a little bit of it. And I will be sharing additional tips and resources. Hope this works for you. And, um, Looking forward to an enjoyable interaction with you. Let's pause for now and do a poll, a quick poll 
using Mentimeter. So please ac access the website www.menti.com and using the code 24329, type in one word that describes how you feel right now, given our current COVID-19 context. I'll give you a few seconds to do so before I show the results that will appear graphically in a word cloud. The bigger the word, the more people would have chosen that same word. So this is what's shaping up. Looks like most of you are feeling anxious and worried. However, while many of you are experiencing anxiety and are worried, there are others who are feeling good, excited, and hopeful. By the way, there are no wrong feelings and there is no judgment here. The feelings are entirely your own. It is what it is all understandable in the context of a significant change, that of COVID pandemic and the conditions, restrictions, and challenges that go with it. We will be experiencing a lot of new things, good or bad, in a context of significant change, swirling waters around us. There will be lots of challenges, but there will also be lots of opportunities. There are just so many pathways we can take amidst what many would say are turbulent waters of change. We take on the challenge, lift a foot to take a step forward, and then realize in stepping down that the context has changed yet again. As the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, into the same river, you cannot step twice. We all know we're creatures of habit, and it always is a challenge to let go of the familiar things, the old ways of doing things. It's good to honor the past, however, until and unless we take courage in positively confronting our present and exploring the possibilities that emerge in the new environment, we will get stuck. So here's a question for you, and we will use our Mentimeter once again. What changes are you currently dealing with? What one significant change are you personally currently dealing with? Once again, access www.menti.com and use the code I have provided. We have a whole slew of answers that surfaced from the personal example, lifestyle changes to work related example, working remotely to the national context example, the terror law. So a whole range of changes that everyone in this virtual community in this virtual learning session are experiencing. And how all these changes relate actually to how one might feel. Example, feeling helpless. Or how one might decide how one might decide to act. Example, adjusting, doing things differently. 
These experiences and observations may be best illustrated by William Bridges' change and transition model. I like this model, by the way, because of its elegant simplicity in explaining change and how we might effectively process our internal experience of it. Models have a way of capturing um, a mirror of our reality, a reflection of our reality. And once we have framed that reality, that experience that many others would have undergone in some sort of a framework, we are better able to understand how we personally experience, you know, what we are experiencing. So then um, this model helps organizations and individuals understand and more effectively manage and work through the personal and human side of change. It addresses two basic concepts, change and transition. Change is the external event, okay? But how is that different from transition, which is the psychological, psychological experience of change, of the change event? So in a change, something old stops and then something new begins but the journey from something ending moving into something beginning entails an experience you know at the human level that is quite profound and it helps to look to do, to look deeper into it So change is the external event or situation that takes place. Perhaps a new organizational strategy, a turn of leadership, a merger, COVID-19, terror law, a family crisis, a wedding, and so on. There are just so many changes and external events that one can experience. The individual or organization focuses on the desired outcome, typically, that the change will produce, which is generally in response to external events. Change can happen very quickly as what we have experienced with COVID-19. Transition, on the other hand, is the inner psychological process that people go through as they internalize and come to terms with a new situation that the change brings about. Empathetic individuals recognize that change can put people in crisis. Time and again, change will only be successful, people find out. If leaders, communities, organizations, families address the transition that people, household members, experience during change. Support then becomes so, so critical, so crucial. Supporting people through transition rather than just simply pushing forward is essential if the change is to work as planned or hoped for. And many changes actually could be unplanned. So all the more we have to take into consideration you know, what people might be experiencing and how to address this so that we can help people move forward in a more positive way. This is key to capitalizing on opportunities for creating resilience or even innovation, whether this be at an individual or organizational level. The starting point for dealing with, with transition is not the outcome, but the endings that people have in leaving the old situation behind. So two directions human nature can take us. 
will it be an extended experience of fear, helplessness, and victimization? Or will it be a step towards self-actualization and engagement? The journey is never easy and has to start with an understanding of where you're coming from. Turning right enables the person to explore clear ways for moving forward and provides opportunities for becoming amazingly resilient. Managing our transition, addressing our inner psychological process that we experience, especially in a context of significant change, is critical. And we need to exert extra effort to be compassionate, not just of others, but even of ourselves, using the lens of empathy and an attitude of kindness. Let us then dig deeper into what transition is all about. <coughs> so here, I'm showing you the transition journey. So I mentioned um, moving you know, from endings, the left side, to new beginnings on the right side, entails moving through a process, a psychological process, a journey, which we call transition. So what are the stages of transition? Bridges model identifies the three stages and individual experiences during change. Stage one is ending. What currently is, is stage two at the center is the neutral zone. And stage three towards the right is the new beginning. Endings. Transition actually starts with an ending. This is paradoxical and true. This first phase of transition begins when people identify what they are losing and learn how to manage these losses. They determine what is over and being left behind and what they will keep. This may include relationships, processes, team members, or locations. Neutral zone at the center. This is the second step of transition and it comes after letting go. People go through an in-between time when the old is gone, but the new isn't fully operational. It is when the critical psychological realignments and changing of patterns takes place. It is the very core of the transition process. This is the time between the old reality and sense of identity and the new one. People are creating new processes and learning what their new roles will be, what their new lives will be. In a family with young children and both parents at home, questions arise in terms of roles for uh, in taking care of the children, perhaps doing the groceries, cooking, cleaning the house even, while having to adjust to working remotely. And for many, having to adjust with a parent or even both not having jobs. People are in a flux and may feel confusion and distress. The neutral zone is actually not neutral at all. It's anything but neutral. And yet the neutral zone is the seedbed from which new beginnings can grow. New beginnings at the right side. Beginnings involve new understandings, values, and attitudes. Beginnings are marked by a release of energy in a new direction. They are an expression of a fresh identity. 
well-managed transitions allow people to establish new roles with an understanding of their purpose, the part they play, and how to contribute and participate most effectively. As a result, they feel reoriented and renewed. In an attempt to help deepen the understanding of transition, which is the psychological experience of change, an external event, I have superimposed another concept within the Bridges model. This is the Kubler-Ross stages of grief, a model that shows how people deal with traumatic or distressing experiences at work or in private life. For example, the death of a loved one. The model isn't perfect, but it has its uses. What I'm showing you is a customized version of Kubler-Ross model to blend it with a Bridges transition model. What might be the general experience a pattern, if you will, that someone coping with a traumatic and distressing situation might experience. Despite the fact that people grieve in a personal manner, it seems that people more or less go through the same stages. How they experience each stage and respond to it, however, could be different. Stage one, denial. Initially, people are shocked when they receive bad news. This general defense mechanism buffers the initial shock or overwhelming emotions and gives the person the chance to come to their senses. Subsequently, they will gradually recover from this shock. It is important that they can express their feelings, for example, by talking to somebody, perhaps the spouse, a close friend, or even a counselor. At the end of this stage, the person will start searching for facts, the truth, or someone to blame. Stage two, resistance. When someone can no longer deny what is happening, feelings of anger even, irritation, jealousy, and resentment arise. In anger and powerlessness are especially directed at their environment. They generally put the blame on other people, colleagues, employers, or the world around them. The anger is directed at the better of the bad news, warranted or not. Stage three, exploration. At this stage, people are trying to get away from the dreadful truth in many different ways. The truth is finally sinking and the person involved feels helpless but may move towards bargaining with themselves or others. By setting goals for themselves, the blow of bad news or the negative event is softened. In a work environment, though they will find it very difficult to negotiate working agreements or make promises, they will be exploring possibilities. Stage four, commitment. When the person becomes aware and more immersed in the reality of change, one can recover from the previous stages, accept their grief, and after some time, will feel like taking up activities again, and they will start making plans again. These plans may have something to do with addressing things in the change event that they can do something about. The journey is not necessarily a straight path. In fact, it can be a back and forth. A person may reach exploration stage and for some reason 
perhaps another change introduced in the situation. The person may go back to endings and denial or denial. The important thing is to recognize where one is in the journey and to be mindful of the value of the wealth of insights that may emerge from the neutral zone. To quote somebody, uh, the essence of life takes place in the neutral zone phase of transition. It is in that interim spaciousness that all possibilities, creativity, and innovative ideas can come to life and flourish. Now, let's have a conversation exercise. In small groups, which will be announced in just a little while, I'd like to invite you to have a fulsome and engaged conversation on the following questions. Given everything going on around us right now, what words or phrases are resonating most vividly with you? What are you hearing the news? In conversations with friends, with family, with co-workers, with people in your community, with, with your neighbors, perhaps, if you're allowed, if you're able to talk to them over the fence, that give you pause or ignite emotions or feelings for you. When you consider these words or phrases that seem to resonate with you, what do you actually feel? This may be negative. This may also be positive emotional reactions. Explore both. Third, what story are you beginning to tell yourself as you consider what's happening now in this COVID environment and your experience of it? What story are you creating for yourself? What narrative is unfolding in your mind's eye? Given all your hearing, feeling, and the story you are writing, what actions are you compelled to take, even small steps, to improve your experience and the experience of others? So these are questions, kind of huge questions. So we're giving you 20 minutes um, for this, and we will let you know uh, five minutes before time's up. <laughs> yeah, there's so much to talk about. Uh, thank you. Correct. Apologies uh, that uh, we have some uh, constraints in terms of the time frame, but uh, I guess I know um, we yes we will request uh, somebody from each group. In our group, it will be Rhoda, who will be um, parents highlighting uh, sharing the highlights of what have been shared uh, within the small group. So, I how many groups, JM? JM, how many groups do we have? Six. Highlights <laughs> done. And then, um, can I request um, access to Anna, sharing of screen? Okay, po. Sagret lang po. Thank error. Emily. Hi. Hi. Sayang din nakatarap si Emily. Ay, nagtaram ako sa group. Ay, 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 ay. Nag nagtaram ako sa Samoyan yes. Dream Out Group. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Wala ako kagroup mo, Ika. The iba. He started it. So, um, yeah, can we, can we um, hear from the reporters? I'll stop sharing muna para everyone can, can be seen. Sige. May group numbers na lang tayo. Uh, group one, group one. I think group one si Rhoda. Ayo ba group yes. one? We group yeah. one. Sige. Uh, quick summary, no? Uh, group members si God, si Anneli, si Edna, si Balot, 
Si Nanette at saka ako. No? There, there are six. Six of us. Tama ba? One, two, three, four, five, six. Then, um, may, in ano ko siya, I followed the, the diagram. Uh, ano yung first reaction mo? Uh, agreed that many, many of us were in denial, but, you know, Una-una yung mga high risk, medyo difficult yan, the people with uh, comorbidities who are, and who are also seniors. And then si Edna, she was worried. Si Balot was actually using the word scared. No? And the, the, the nice question from Nanette was, how do we survive? Okay, these, these are the initial reactions when the lockdown was announced, when everybody realized there was a pandemic going on. So, but eventually, uh, nag nag morph na yung mga feelings na no after after that initial shock and then there's some resistance ano na lang ang gagawin namin no like but then nag develop ito like in the case of Annalie duty calls as a doctor no and duty calls as a member of the family na now that you have more time for for the stuff that you used to put off before the gods medyo high risk din siya and uh, he was concerned about the, the reality, no, na, na he had a stent and his BP fluctuates, but now he enjoys more time getting exercise, staying at home. He is con still concerned, but he is getting better. No? The Edna, she was worried, but she has accepted the fact, and her children have also accepted, accepted the fact, they have to adapt and be hopeful. No? So they're making use of technology to be able to chat with one another and to be abreast of what's happening to one another. Si Balot, during the, the, the lockdown, she was really scared, but her coping mechanism for stress is to clean the house. <laughs> How nice. And she, there is now time for the family to gather every evening to pray the rosary and then to read the gospel. She now knows, she understands that everything is happening for a purpose and she has been given time to reflect and to take a look at a different lifestyle on how she will go back to work. Okay. Si Nanette talks about adapting also to survive and finding a way to help others. Uh, what she's saying is they also have time with the family now, with the kids. The kids have online classes and then uh, husband and wife are working from home. So they need to also cope so that the family should be aware of the, the adjustments that have to be made. So in all, no, um, we we look at the framework. I think at this stage, parang nag-explore nandun na tayo. Karamihan sa tayong nag-explore on what we need to do to be able to adapt and what course of action we will be committing to for our new beginnings. Hindi na tapos yung sharing ko eh, but I was talking about ano. Uh, being disappointed and angry at the same time at the way the government reacted kasi galing ako ng gobyerno eh. So, and I used to teach crisis management in government. That's why I was a bit disappointed that they didn't take the threat seriously in January. So, it could have turned out differently. Anyway, uh, yun yung discussion points namin in the 15 minutes that we were given. Did I miss anything? No, that's fine. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, yeah. For the rest, we'll be presenting. You, uh, it's up to you how you might want to uh, present in terms of highlight. You don't answer to, but it's great that you use that, Rhoda. So thank you. I na miss si Rhoda. Ano yun? Ano yun? Yung mga Louis Vuitton mo at yung mga South Sea for. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, this pandemic has actually simplified life for a lot of people. You don't need jewelry because kumakapit sa metal ang COVID uh, virus. Eh. So you, you don't need jewelry. You don't need your lipstick because you need to go out in a mask. And you don't need your, your Louis Vuitton and your Jimmy Choo shoes because you're not going anywhere. You stay home. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rada. But when you have a Zoom, Zoom meeting, you have to think about what you're going to wear because Thank you. So there are five more groups to present. Um, I, I may, just, uh, may I consult the, the, our community here? Um, you know, I know that you, this has been... Um, you know, planned for one and a half hours, which is almost done, right? Oh. Uh, what time is it there in the in the Philippines? Two thirty. It's two thirty. Two thirty. So, uh, I wonder if you're okay with um, staying thirty more minutes, or we could also, um, you know, uh, cut off some activities and go to some inputs, you know, towards the end. 
Okay lang. Okay, the reason, God. Ha? Okay lang. Ako okay lang. Uh-uh. Uh, or or okay din ba na for those um who can stay for 30 more uh, for those who cannot stay um Just you know leave. no offense if they have to leave before then if they need to go is that okay okay yeah. okay all right yeah, so yeah. with that agreement we will extend until two o'clock manila time three o'clock then, because manila i know three o'clock three o'clock three o'clock manila time uh, three o'clock sorry three o'clock. three o'clock because i could i can uh, i understand how important it is to you know to share how we feel and what we're what's happening to us right now and we're learning from others as well so thank you the the next five groups so mga ano uh, two to three uh highlights and then within uh two two minutes um preferably at most two and a half minutes per thank you group two hello po uh we have ko lang din po yung members namin si ma'am dalen ma'am isa ma'am azl doc nel and si ma'am dizzy so yung mga nasabi po ng previous group ay somewhat ganun din naman sa mga na-experience din sa group namin. Pero ang important highlight lang din dito sa group namin is that kahit iba't iba yung fields namin, may estudyante, merong frontliner, may doktor, merong mga freelancer, tapos may mga nag-work sa company, ay ma mapapansin na pare-parehas din. May similarities yung mga naranasan natin. Yun na nga yung pagiging anxious, wary, tapos um, paranoia na din na dumating dun sa point na may isa kaming member na um, nag-grabe yung pagbabasa niya ng information about um, about the COVID nga. Tapos yun, so parang nag nakadulot yun sa kanya na anxiety attacks. Also, ayun din, um, dito na parang nakakost din ng anxiety is yung pagbabago ng routines natin. Like for me, estudyante na um, may, may schedule parang nasanay na may schedule sa klase tapos tapos bigla magsha-shift sa, sa hawa ko yung sarili kong oras and all tapos ayun so kung, pa, kung paano namin ito na na overcome ay we try doing um hobbies na na stop namin dati like parang uh, ma'am ma'am Azel started writing journals again nagbabasa ulit siya also Yung iba naman ay they tried to connect to old to old friends. Parang wala, to maintain lang din yung um, communication to people. Also, breathing exercises, then uh, meditation. And also, syempre, um, pag, um, pag-abide sa mga rules din naman na, na kunyari sa pag-wear ng mask, physical distancing, and also yung pagdadasal and continuously praying and with the family and talking to God. Ayun. So yun yun mga yun yun mga um naging um ways namin to overcome kung ano yung mga naging changes or tran- yung pag-transition dito sa new normal na nga na sinasabi. Thank you Ella uh, and group 2. May we have group 3 please? Uh sino ang group 3? Tayo pa, okay. Sorry. Um, we are group three. I'm with Sir TG, uh, Miss uh, si Connie, Miss Cherry, and Miss Lodi. So, um, what word uh, can we describe yung um, the pandemic, what happened now? Uh, uh, we can describe what we feel as collectively as anxious and bothered. Because of uh, of three levels of what is happening around what is happening in our country uh, around uh, the world and what is happening in our country and our and personal things, uh, we are just disappointed with the response of major economies, especially in the U.S. Uh, and and in China. Well, we can ganon naman talaga yung China. We cannot change that they are. Uh, different. Uh, they are not uh, democratic. But uh, we instead uh, mada, uh, medyo hindi maganda yung response ng most uh, of 
the major economies. So it, it really affected the Philippines. Then our government response, um, every day we can see in the news that every day each department fails to do what they really need to do. So from um, the small barangay to uh, the cabinet members, even the senators and the representatives, they really failed to do and did a lot of damage to our democracy, to the democracy, or to our democracy. So, uh, yun, uh, the government did not do anything uh, connected to the pandemic. Instead, they, um, they, uh, what they did to ABS-CBN, the media, Maria Reza, uh, ano pa ba? And so on. And daming nilang ginawa na instead of um, focusing on health and our personal security. So, uh, okay, so maybe, uh, next naman is our personal side. We have Connie who still uh, is a student. Diba, Connie? Yeah. Uh, yun, they will be adjusting to new procedures sa university and they uh, still there's a threat of um, the virus so hindi pa, din, hindi pa din sila confident with what they will do uh, how will they uh, tapos hindi naman lahat may access to the remote learning so hopefully uh, the yung mga current members natin will cope up with that. Uh, then, so with the, ano naman yung no work, no pay, uh, diba, most of the people, uh, walang mga economic activities, limited economic activities. So, how will people earn and will pay their bills? Maybe we are fortunate, pero in the long run, ano yung mangyayari? Then, yung uh, yung mga like sinister TG and Miss Cherry and yung may mga anak yung how to pro how will they protect their children uh, during this time paano mag yung uh, methodology ng learning sa basic education to college yun lang po then uh, what did we do oh we try to share Sir TG shared uh, memories happy memories that we can look forward to sa Facebook niya, even sa group. Marami siyang sinishare. And we also, uh, ako personally, I share news na verified. I try to, um, nagko-comment ako sa mga friends ko who shares fake news. So, yun lang yung ginagawa ko. Because it bothers me na madami akong friends na hindi nila alam uh, kung ano yung democracy, ano yung um, pinaglaban natin before, bakit tayo ngayon, they forgot about history totally. Yun lang, madami akong friends na gano'n. Thank you so Yan much, Kia, you. and group 3. Thank you. Uh, may we have group 4, please? Hello. Good afternoon. Parang meron ako nakikita ang common sa amin ng mga nagre-report, pinakabata sa grupo. <laughs> Sige, uh, apat lang kami sa group but our discussion was very comprehensive kasi ang daming mga sinishare actually nagsasalita pa kami when the breakout was ano uh, was completed so bumalik na tayo sa one session anyway, yung common feeling po sa amin yung parang bigla-bigla we had to change our ways. Parang ganun. Mixed reactions na may slight, re may slight apprehension. Uh, kailangan nasa bahay lang tayo. But at the same time, dahil nasa bahay lang tayo, ano yung mga pwede nating isipin na, na mga bagong uh, yung opportunities, bagong ways of doing things para maging positive yung nangyari sa atin. Uh, meron din nagsabi na na since very busy yung area where they live in, 
parang nakakapanin because you're being told to to socially distance pero makikita mo ang um, ang haba ng pila, ang dami ng tao, etc. So yun yung mga initial reactions. Uh, frustrated din tayo sa government dahil parang we were left to do things on our own. We were left to our own devices dito sa Pilipinas kasi mas iba yung kanilang mga priorities. So what did we do? <clears throat> like like sabi ni Don uh, kailangan dahil hindi na tayo nagkikita-kita yung facial expression na wala na, yung body language hindi natin na, dapat meron tayo mga bagong ways of doing things may mga businesses tayong mga bago na pwedeng pasukin uh, ganun din ang nangyari kay, kay Sherry she became very busy dahil nga uh, Ano nang pwede natin gawin? So, naka-zoom siya lagi and with different time zones, hindi na ata natutulog si Sherry sa kaso zoom Kasi meron siyang parish, merong alumni, and social communication pa naman yung hinahandle niya. So, she has to communicate to a lot of people. And they are also starting a business right now. So, yun yung sinasabi ni ni Pons na we have to be more creative. Sabi rin ni Don na we have to be more creative and think of ways to to face the challenge now. Um, ako naman po, dahil, dahil nasa food industry nga ako, parang now is the time to make pivot action. Nung dati, maraming nagda-dine in, ngayon talagang delivered na yung gusto nila. And before, when during weekends, family would families would go out ngayon they tend to be they, they tend to stay at home and then have food delivered to their homes na lang pero uh, agreeable yung grupo na because we now live simply we can save more uh, kasi hindi tayo napapagastos dahil konti yung lakwat siya yan so we have to adapt to the new norms, to the new technology. And for us na hindi mga millennials or Gen X, that's that's quite a challenge now. So yun po yung aming highlights. Thank, Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Group 4. May we have Group 5, please? Ayan, for Group 5 po, um, ako, ang member po ako, si Sir Robert, si Ma'am Sally, Si, pangani, si Dulce, uh, student pa ata siya, and si Sir Dennis de la Torre. So basically, ang, ang first na tinignan namin is yung diagram kung nasa denial ka pa, resistance, uh, exploration, or commitment. So three out of five, nasa commitment. And the other two are on the exploration phase. So... Ang, ang naging conclusion namin kung bakit commitment yung yung tatlo is due to the nature of their work. Si Sir Robert is a, is a public servant so naka-duty siya kahit naka-quarantine. So si Sir Dennis naman is part of UP pandemic response. And si Ma'am Selly is madaming response operations din. So basically, parang nag-jump na sila sa commitment. So wala na yung denial, wala na yung resistance. Kasi call of duty na yung inuna talaga nila. So kumbaga, wala na silang choice. So kailangan mag-commit talaga. Kasi pag hindi sila nag-commit, um, wala, nangana. <laughs> Ako naman, tsaka si Dulce, nasa exploration kami. Um, si Dulce, as a student, syempre, madaming adaptations na kailangan gawin para sa changes sa uh, new normal. Tapos ako, as a professional, uh, since architect ako, and uh, part kami ng non-essential ngayon eh, unless sa uh, hospital ka nagtatrabaho or yung mga projects mo related sa hospitals, sa healthcare. So, ayun, nasa exploration phase kami. So, Si Dulce, 
explore, exploring ways to to adapt to daily routines. Tapos ako naman exploring other business opportunities. So, yun lang po. Thank you. Thanks for all your sharing and the authenticity you brought with you. Thanks for your reporting of what came out in your respective groups. Um, it really takes courage um, to, to share those stuff. Um, you know, there's a whole range that has been shared uh, by the spokesperson of each group. And I honor everyone's courage in sharing their stories. Come to think of it, the progress of the world we live in truly depends on our own progress as hum human beings right here, right now. You didn't have to know the perfect thing to do or say, you just said it, and you did share your thoughts and feelings. So let's ride this heartbreaking wave of COVID-19 and social context into a, potential, uh, into a brighter future where everyone's life matters. And right now, we need to ensure we ourselves are okay and that our families are okay. So maybe just a reflection for now, not a small group. Um, uh, I'll give you just uh, two minutes right now to get hold of a piece of paper. So let's shift this a little bit. Um, get hold of a piece of paper right now. Uh, and then within two minutes, answer this question. As I reflect on moving forward and having uh, listened to others, you know, shared, um, share what, you know, they've, they've been doing uh, to move forward, what are uh, more effective actions or strategies I personally um, can consider for myself? In other words, um, uh, uh, another way of, of saying this, what else? What else can I do? What have I learned from others you know, that I can also use? What might I consider? What insights have been generated listening to others right you know in, in the past few minutes? And based on those insights, what might I consider using you know, to move forward? So this might be in terms of intentions for actions or actual actions. So just two minutes, quick brainstorming, writing down. Are there any questions? Clarifications. Okay. So can I uh, can we ask um, three or four people to perhaps share what uh, one or two things from what they wrote? You can unmute yourself and just share, please. Anyone would like to share? Show video, oh, oh. okay. Um, Anyway, <laughs> <Go ahead>. um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm sharing precisely because there are a lot of students here and parents who are also scared about the online classes that will happen, no. So just to let you know, the faculty and the teachers have the same difficulties and the same fears. So what UP is doing now, and we just finished the first leg, is a lot of webinars for all the faculty across uh, the university. So one day it's the science section, another day it's the social science, another day it's, you know, so, sunod, sunod yan. And I think they're going to sponsor the same thing for students. They'll just come out with the announcements. But just to prepare, um, UP is going to use Google. So, to so use what? Sorry, say that again. The platform mainly is Google. U -V -L -T. Okay. So, uh, you can get familiar with that. And um, you really have to register your 
um, you see that every .ph uh, email address because uh, things are going to go there faster, like Zoom with uh, the UP edu, that edu.ph is limitless. So, and for Ibalonians, let you know that you can have the same privilege to apply with alumni. So there is a UP uh, alumni email address, uh, up.ph.edu.ed. So you can have, let's say, uh, those same privileges and all of that. So what am I doing? It's basically, I'm not a techie person, but I have to study and to practice. So basically, that's it. But I just want to share also what the university is doing for all those who are still in UP and for those who are having what? Anxiousness and anxiety over the online classes. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. Can we hear from one or two more? Before we move on to the last part. What? Oh yeah, Azal. Delen. Si Delen. Ah, Delen. 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 So, right. kung sa COVID yung anxiety natin, alamin natin ano talaga yung totoo. Kasi in the first few months, there were really a lot of speculations on what the virus was. So, there was really a lot of fear. Also because the virus was new. But now that we're getting more scientific data about it, then let's look at it more scientifically. So, yung mga unang mga speculations, tapos talagang mga fear-inducing information, dapat malampasan na natin yan and be more guided scientifically and follow what really is needed. <laughs> tapos on the other anxiety-laden issues like the new terror bill that has been signed, I mean, it's also very anxious-laden uh, for us, especially those who are still actively involved. Ano na lang, basta na lang tayo dadampitin. Basta na lang ba tayo kakasuhan. So, kailangan aware din tayo sa nangyayari. Tapos, assert our rights. And now that there are organized groups that will really oppose this, we need to also be actively involved. Kasi hindi natin pwede palampasin. Especially for us, who are martial law people, and we really fought all these uh, repressive uh, decrees, hindi pwedeng palampasin. So, kailangan mag-organize pa rin tayo. So, this is how we should move on. We should not be cowed by fear. We should not be cowed by non uh, yung non-knowledge or ignorance of what's happening. We have to inform ourselves and we have to continue to be organized. Yun lang. And I, wow. I appreciate Ibalon's history in this and I hope Ibalon will continue with this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Delen. I'm glad that you spoke up uh, and shared this thing about the uh, COVID, you know, and also um, really being concrete about our response to the reality right now, not just COVID, but the repressive, you know, um, of uh, regime, <laughs> you know. Um, thank you for the call. Yeah, so, thank you. Thank you, Gods. Yeah. Can we hear one one last maybe person to share? Uh, Asel, did you want to talk earlier, or you're just uh, unmuted? Um. Yeah. I I'd like to share. Um. I'm thinking of um for a long time. Although freelance na ako for a long time, ang isang realization ko kasi is one of the new thing. Although that yung ginagawa to. Halos online na talaga yung, yung new normal in terms of work. No? So, uh, I have made a commitment to myself that this is one thing that kailangan kong pag-aralan. Paano kayo ko convert sa digital form ang dati kong <laughs> skills na ginamit for my freelance work. And uh, gusto ko iti relate with the next possible sessions ng Ibalon, I think. 
yung paano magkakatulungan kasi there are millennials na mga members who are very good in this that we can learn from the, the you know the, the senior ones can learn from so yun yung gusto ko lang i-share looking forward to that yeah thank you so much Azan and I'm sure uh, TG and the rest Lisa the rest will find ways of doing that uh, because uh, there's already a, a platform a program that has been established to continue on beyond this this is just as I understand it, uh, a startup program. This is actually a pilot. We're not exactly sure how it will turn out, you know, and uh, the design even is kind of flexible in the sense that we've, uh, I've done uh, some estimation as well, but, uh, you know, um, uh, TG is correct in terms of his time estimate, you know, like uh, at Lisa as well. Uh, and it's okay to adjust to, to um, you know, to, to the needs of, of the community. And I'm sure we can learn, uh, more as we progress, as you progress in uh, in the delivery of the program. So what Azel mentioned can be part of that, I feel. Let me now share with you a few things you can do whenever you are in your, wherever you are in your transition journey. If you are in the denial stage, coming from endings into the neutral zone, it may be best to address your need for information and conversation. In this stage, it is more than ever important to acknowledge your feelings and process your thoughts. How might you benefit from reflecting on past successes? Because you do have a lot of victories in your life journey to date. If you are in the resistance stage, other than information, you do need to seek support. Focus on facts, accept your feelings, and seek understanding. How might things be different if you have the information that you need and are able to sift through the muck? If you are in the exploration stage, other than information, you will benefit from guidance. This may not necessarily be always from one person. Guidance can come from credible resources as well. Be open, be open to possibilities and focus on what is within your span of control. That will help you move forward, even if it's quite a struggle. Towards the commitment stage, which is, which is essentially a commitment to oneself, to yourself, and your family. As you explore possibilities and move forward, you are also both enhancing and relying on your personal resilience. This is our strength in the midst of change and stressful life events. This is about our ability to spring back or recover from change or misfortune. Bottom line is, this is about not just taking care of, your, uh, of others, example our families but also taking care of ourselves how do you move forward in a purposive way let me share with you a few reflection points a few questions that you might ask yourself in moving forward what information do you really need who can you talk with what do you want in your future what gifts what talents do you have to offer others, yourselves, people close to you, people you love. What opportunities can you create? And what support can you offer others? Research has shown resilient individuals are people who take responsibility. They know they have the power of choice. They ask, they lobby for themselves and the people they wish to help. Focus on empowering interpretations. They challenge ideas about own abilities and future pathways. They check their self-talk 
the narrative that they're creating within their minds and replace whatever limiting beliefs there might be with more empowering beliefs and choose affirming statements about themselves and others that are more ennobling and life-giving. Resilient individuals have meaningful connections. They identify and or develop a kind of personal board of advisors. Could be friends, could be family, and connect at a deeper level. Resilient individuals move on with their lives. They look ahead. They are purpose and goal driven. And resilience is also about mindfulness. On the face of it, being present on purpose sounds very simple. But in reality, this state can be challenging to sustain even for a short period of time, given the constant stream of distractions we all encounter. Mindfulness helps reduce automatic reactions and habitual thinking. As we develop our inner resources, we are less likely to seek refuge in external solutions, which can sometimes be unhealthy. Mindfulness actually helps us create some internal space between an experience we encounter and our response to it. It's that absolutely necessary pause that will help us respond, you know, in a more effective, healthy, positive way. While some associate mindfulness meditation with Eastern-based religions, mindfulness is really at its core a secular practice. More and more workplaces are also recognizing the benefits of mindfulness meditation focused programming. Employers like Google and General Mills have offered such programming and evaluated the results. They found that mindfulness meditation helps employees effectively manage stress, increase resilience, reduce health risks, and enhance effectiveness in the workplace, like better attention, better focus, better self-awareness. Let's now experience a sample activity on mindfulness. Okay. Mindful breathing. Close your eyes and rest your hands on your knees. Bring your attention to the touch of your body on your seat. There are, of course, other support, you know, uh, resources that you can uh, make use of, activities, exercises, other than mindfulness. Uh, I just chose to focus on this as one possible exercise or activity that you can use to build your own personal resilience so that you're able to better address your psychological or em and emotional experience of change, especially in this COVID environment. There's so many other things that we can do. I'm hoping though that uh, this brief session has provided some ideas on how you might manage your way forward in this COVID environment. There are actually a number of other resources that I can share with you um, in this PowerPoint slide that's clickable. Um, the resources that I have here, you might want to just explore this. Uh, okay, just going back to this uh, closing slide. Thank you once again for the invitation and a big thank you for everything that you have offered for yourselves and the rest of us in this community session. So I'll be sharing again additional resources that can be sent to everyone. And I would like to end with one closing thought using the words of Viktor Frankl, who said, everything can be taken from a person, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, 
to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Once again, thank you. Daghan salamat. Maraming salamat, Gods. Magayunon ba ang seminar mo? Thank you. Just mabalos. Oh, just mabalos. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to see you. Uh, yeah. So I, I think we have we have to hear from TG as well, like um, TG. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, Lisa. Uh, before I close, uh, you want to have some uh, notes also, please. Lisa, you have some announcements to make? No more. Okay, anyway, can I have uh, JM? Can you just flash? Uh, I don't feel comfortable with my uh, photo there in Blazon. Can, <laughs> <I just, laughs> can, I, can I have a sharing uh, for my uh, last few slides? Okay, there you are. Um, what you see here is the policy statement that your UP <coughs> Ibalon uh, alum. Can you see this, please? Yeah. Okay. We can. Uh huh. So first of all, uh, I'd like to end by uh, uh, flashing a slide here. Uh, the UP Board of Direct UP Ibalon Alumni Association Board of Directors really uh, got together and uh, try to uh, craft a policy statement so that uh, we would be able to continue uh, carrying the torch, uh, so to speak. Um, uh, the UP Associate, Ibalon Alumni Association should be committed to stay as a reliable alumni organization and resource to support Bicolano UP students and alumni to help them remain as healthy and productive citizens of the country as well as be engaged with our vibrant UP Ibalon community. So this is now most applicable during times of calamities and uncertainties under the pandemic. So uh, you have already uh, seen part of our programs and this particular web seminar is uh, but part of uh, the things that we wish to uh, uh, pursue. It falls under the non-medical uh, options that we can do. The other options that we were able to discuss or we are continuing to discuss are those that fall under medical programs. Obviously, we can also support by means of uh, uh, approaching it on a pure medical basis. Uh, the third one, of course, is uh, through our incumbents or uh, giving additional programs for our incumbents. And this, uh, we probably can look at some, you know, emergency fund assistance for our students, uh, job opportunities by way of, you know, consciously having a referral program and so on and so forth. These details are going to be posted again and again on our uh, SOC meds. And uh, for this, I would like to be very, very thankful for all of you, the general membership at large can now can you now go back to uh, the gallery? I can now stop sharing this. Para ma-view na natin lahat. Okay? Uh, um, yeah, okay. Can you flash uh, your video screen so can we, we can have a photo opportunity? Uh, yung. Duze, Anneli, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, as I thank all the participants on this maiden adventure, I would also like to thank uh, very quickly also the members of the board, uh, board of directors that I showed a while ago. I don't know, I forgot to mention uh, those who were not in the picture like uh, Dr. Dennis or Richard. And uh, of course you had Sherry who led the prayer and Kit Onyate as also part of the uh, board of directors. And uh, uh, for the web seminar team, I'd like to uh, uh, and uh, please uh, uh, join me in uh, thanking and applauding the web seminar team. Lisa Zorbito, of course, as project manager. Then the millennials, you know, like Anton, Galoy, Romero, uh, Kian, of course, 
Judy, where's Judy? Uh, there you are, Judy. Mahina internet niya, pero okay lang yan. And of course, uh, SOS namin kanina or kagabi, si uh, incumbent uh, resident JM. Palakpakan din natin si JM, no? Si JM is still there uh, doing the technical production. Uh, just by way of uh, advertisement also, like I said, uh, these are all uh, under the Ibangonian program. Coin term namin for Ibalonian, Ibangon, and ngayon for the urgency of the matter. So it's not going to be just, you know, the web seminar series. It's not just going to be for the COVID time, but I hopefully will look at it as a continuing endeavor among all Ibalonians. No? Sometimes we are from the West, sometimes we are from the East, diba, no? as uh, Delen said. But hopefully, we would be able to craft and, uh, you know, rally uh, for some common uh, programs that we can all be proud of. Uh, in a few days, we will be announcing two major uh, initiatives again. One is uh, the stimulus uh, uh, program or uh, response uh, of the UP Balon community, probably to take advantage of the stimulus uh, program of the government do something productive also, and that would be uh, uh, through the project management uh, head of uh, uh, our group, si, uh, Dr. Dennis uh, De La Torre, and the Jansha, you call him sometimes King Richard. No? Then the other uh, main uh, uh, initiative we're looking at uh, would be the what we call the concert series. I see Pons uh, somewhere, can in Pons? How are you? Yes. Yeah, how are you? Yes. Yeah, Carl Ramirez, uh, as you very well know, is very active in uh, producing online concerts for fundraising or for community involvement and so on and so forth. So that will uh, probably comprise uh, our second uh, uh, forthcoming effort, no? yung online concerts for uh, you know so many other purposes fundraising and uh, probably just to get reconnected with everyone so uh, on that note uh, i would just uh, again like to thank again uh, all the participants we, we are 30 now um, we will probably be able to post uh, some of the learnings that uh, are very graciously shared by goods here uh, you know, we will be able to probably edit some portions of the webinar and uh, probably share it on a public uh, sharing basis without, of course, getting into too much uh, details of our individual problems for obvious reasons, no? for obvious uh, confidential reasons. So, uh, again, uh, can I request everyone to give their smiles? Uh, I will have a picture. Oh, si Liz Bayo. Sino si Liz Bayo? Walang nga pupunta dito. One, two, three. Okay, one more. Another slide. I think we have more than uh, 30 participants now. One, two. Okay. So that being said, uh, spread the word around. The UP Ibalon Alumni Association, together with our resident members, are all alive and kicking and uh, probably to reduce our stress and our worries the best way is to get you know reconnected join our hands and uh, so many endeavors that we could pursue collectively and even individually thank you very much thank you bye bye thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.